Hello, Phil here from Radio.co, and thank you very much for checking out our on-demand demo. Now, the purpose of this video is to give you a crash course, like an introduction per se, of how our Radio.co platform works. So if you've ever wondered about launching your very own internet radio station, then this is the perfect video for you, as I'll be going through the basics of using our fantastic cloud-based platform. Things such as how to upload your own content, so if you want to play music or talk show content you've done, how to upload that and actually get it to play, how to build your shows, how to schedule your shows, and then perhaps the most important thing, getting people to listen. I'll also be guiding you through a couple of features that we have, but I'll be really focusing on the pure basics of the platform. So uh, get comfortable, grab yourself a drink, and enjoy and learn how to launch your own internet radio station in maybe 30 to 40 minutes. Thanks for checking out Radio.co on YouTube. If you want to see more kit reviews, live webinars, and handy broadcasting tips, then give us a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and click the bell icon. And welcome to your Radio.co dashboard. This is really the epicenter of your Radio.co station, and it's actually what you, your host, your station managers, and, and really anyone who has remote access to your station, this is what they will be greeted with every time they log in. It's just showing you what your station is doing at this moment in time. Um, now, the most important thing really to focus on first is, well, the most important, is your station on air? This one clearly is because it states on air air and you can also see that content is playing as well uh, now you can turn your station on and off anytime you like but by default a lot of people like to leave it 24 7 because radio.co is an entirely cloud-based platform which means not only does it require no downloading or no installation to work it's you know just a case of logging in and hey presto there you go but cloud-based means it's actually being powered by us. So even if you have no power, no computer on, no internet, your station is still broadcasting 24-7. You just need to tell it what you want it to do. We'll keep it powered. And that's why a lot of people, in fact, most of our uh, broadcasters, prefer to keep their stations on air 24-7. But you can turn it off if you like, just from here. Um, now, everything else here to the side, to the right, it says connection status. Now, that is referring to live broadcasting, or rather, are you, the live host for this show, connected so people can hear what you are saying and doing? Uh, I'm not doing a live broadcast at the moment, which is why it says not connected. But if I was, it would say connected, or it might say live or on air. So in order to change that, you do need to download a little piece of software uh, to, to make that possible. Now, if you are using a Windows machine, uh, you will be able to use our radio.co broadcasting tool for Windows. Windows. Uh, it's not actually on display here because I'm using this from a Mac. <laughs> Otherwise, if you are logging in from a Windows device, you will see something in this uh, top right of the screen. It will just say download broadcaster. Now, if you're using a Mac like I am uh, right now, you will be able to use a third party solution called BUT. That's B-U-T-T or broadcast using this tool is what it stands for. Um, and there's two ways you can log in. You can use your radio.co login in details and you just hook it up there. It recognizes that you're logged in and you just select the piece of kit you are using for your broadcast. Or you can hook up with your unique host, port and password. This is unique to every user that has access to your station. Uh, and you can actually use these details to connect to a variety of external software like some DJ platforms like Virtual DJ or Serato or you know things like that. Uh, if you would like more information on other playouts or uh, some automation tools that you may want to use alongside Radio.co, then go to our help center, help.radio.co, and we have a selection of them there. Uh, as for everything else, it's just showing you your current concurrent listenership uh, so how many simultaneous streams are connected right now in this case just one uh, next we have a bandwidth or rather uh, how many hours a month are people streaming your station for or rather how long how many hours can people stream your station for um, I have 75 terabytes which is our top plan our premium plan and just for context that gives you about 1.5 million listening hours a month which is an insane amount of uh, 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 room for people to listen to your station for uh, even on our lowest plans, uh, you will get far more than you might find elsewhere, uh, averaging maybe about 16 to 18,000 hours a month. And that's on our cheapest plan. Um, and then finally, we have storage here, which just, well, it's pretty self-explanatory. How much storage are you currently using to store all of your media and how much have you got left? Uh, now, each of these listeners, bandwidth and storage are relevant depending on which subscription plan you take. We have four in total. We have light, standard, 
plus and premium. Um, uh, I'd say one of our main plans is probably our standard plan. It kind of gives you a great comfortable start with most of our features. Uh, and as they go up the plus and premium, you get more features, more storage, more listeners, and also inclusive mobile apps as well, which may be the main reason that you go for one of those higher end plans. Um, there are other things as well, like users. Uh, so there'll be a cap on how many people you can give remote access to, but I'll cover that very, very shortly. And this is just showing, well, as you can see here, what's currently playing, what's previously played, what's coming up next, and what shows have we got scheduled. Um, now, there are a lot of really cool, really great things that Radio.co can do, but I'm just going to focus on the basics, so actually getting started. And I like to break those down into four points. Uploading media, building shows, scheduling shows, and inviting people to listen. So the first step is adding media. So we want to come to the media tab here on the left, and conveniently on the right, and actually it was on the right of the screen before, uh, but just click on add media here and you can select any files that you have saved to your computer. And they can be MP3 or AAC. And they can be whatever you like. So they can be music, interviews, uh, some ads you may have made, some idents, some vox pops, you know, anything you like. As long as it's an MP3 or an AAC file, you can be uploaded. Uh, now, everything you upload here has a limit on 200 megabytes. So if you are uploading something that's larger, maybe a several hour long podcast, for example, uh, or a live stream that you recorded and you want to upload that, and it might be, again, several hours long, uh, you can upload it via alternative means or FTP, File Transfer Protocol, it stands for. And it's basically a way of taking large amounts of files or large sized files from one location to a server, which is where your radio.co station is located on. Uh, so it's a great way to upload lots of content really quickly. So again, if you want more information about that, head to our help center, help.radio.co. Uh, okay, so when you've uploaded media, you'll find they are in a long list here. And again, your media library is all cloud-based. So it doesn't matter what computer you log into your account from, you'll always find your media and therefore always find your station in front of you. You'll also see that a lot of these tracks have got brightly colored labels attached to them. We've got Northern Soul, Podcast, Advert, and they're called Tags. And that's what you can use to organize your media. So if you are uploading a lot of content, it can be hugely beneficial to tag them or rather categorize them. Just means you can keep track of what you've got and keep everything neat and tidy. So if I was to upload, um, say, these three tracks here, and you can literally type in anything you like to be these tags. So say, for example, these were... Uh, drum and bass tracks. You know, I have no idea whether that's still a genre that's going strong, but it is on my station. So I'm going to type in, yeah, drum, or now is it drum and bass or drum and bass? Let's let's be safe. Drum and bass. Let's be really square. Uh, so drum and bass. I can click on add. And there we go. It's now created a tag called drum and bass, and it's attached it to these three tracks here. So what it's done is it's kind of created a folder. So if I go to the Tags tab here on the left-hand side of the screen, you will see a list of all the tags I've made and a number next to them, showing you how many tracks are associated with this tag. So like I've just done, there are three tracks associated with drum and bass. Uh, you can click on the tag and it will display all the tracks associated there. So yeah, it's really great just to keep things organized, but you can actually use these tags uh, another way. You can randomize tracks to be in your playlists. So I'll show you how that looks uh, in a short moment. Uh, moving on down the list here, we've got recordings. So if you subscribe to at least our standard plan, which is perhaps sometimes the best way to start rather than go for our lowest plan, uh, because you get loads of really great features included that can really bolster the uh, the ease of managing and creating uh, your station. One of those tools is live recordings. So you can schedule a live show to record. So as soon as you begin broadcasting, it's capturing it for you on your account. And when you come off, when you finish your show, you have an MP3 file of the show you've just finished like this here. I've got a two hour long file from, well, at time of recording, last week. Um, so if I wanted to um, you know, do something else with this file, what I can do is I could download it just onto my personal computer. I could upload it to our sister company, podcast.co. So if it's a talk show you've done, then why not recycle it and turn it into a podcast? Because there are loads of audiences on other platforms that may not necessarily find out about your station because they are stubborn and only dwell within Spotify or YouTube and things like that. So a great way of capitalizing and capturing on more audiences outside your radio station is to provide secondary content or alternative ways of listening, such as 
a podcast. Uh, if you were to subscribe to both Radio.co and Podcast.co, you can uh, well you can benefit from a ten percent discount on both of those platforms. So if on-demand content is something you want to do for the talking variety, at least Podcast.co is a great way to uh, to begin that journey. Alternatively, if it's music you want to make available on demand, we have integration with Mixcloud, so you can publish your content there and, again, direct people to Mixcloud in order to listen to your uh, content whenever is convenient to them. Or, at the very least, you could place this file into a playlist and just repeat it on your station. So, again, I'll show you how that looks uh, very, very shortly. Moving down again, we have voice tracking. This is a fantastic way to easily broadcast or or rather record content directly into Radio.com. Now, user case, what a voice track can be is you've built a playlist of music, which is fine, I guess, but you may want to add a bit of personality to it, whether that's your voice or uh, a host from another host or something like that. Um, So a way of doing that is uh, by recording a voice track. And what you do is you click on the new voice track button here, click on this red microphone button here, and just confirm the input you're using. So I'm using the microphone that's plugged into my Scarlett 2i2 audio interface. If I'm happy with that, I simply press this red button a second time and it starts counting backwards from 10 minutes. And you can also see my levels are moving up and down here. So you know that, you know, I'm uh, recording my uh, vocals here. So how it works is it's kind of like you've booked a session in a recording booth for 10 minutes. That's essentially how it works. Every time you click record, every time you start a recording, you have a 10 minute time limit. So this is just a great way of recording bits of your personality. So you could build a playlist of music and insert your voice to introduce the track that's coming up next or ask people to get in touch or download your mobile app. You could interview someone in 10 minutes. You could talk about the news. You could do the news. You know, it, it's just a way for you to record your own content without having to go elsewhere. So rather than recording it somewhere else, saving it, downloading it, uploading it, scheduling it, you know, cut a lot of that out and just record it directly into radio.co and immediately slip it into a playlist. Uh, When you finish with it, click stop. You can listen back to it to make sure everything sounds okay by pressing play, which will appear in uh, there. There we go. So press play. You can click the clear recording if you want to delete it and start again. And if you want to give it a name, you can give it a title and that will save it. So I'm going to call this one Phil Intro Rambling, something like that. Uh, click on Create. And what it would do is it will then save that voice track and place it at the top of your voice tracking folder. Here we go. Phil Intro Rambling. And it's a 56 minute, uh, 56 second long grief. I do ramble if it's 56 minutes long, uh, but there we go. Um, I'll also show you another way you can record a voice track, which makes a bit more sense to me. um, And it might be an easy way of doing it to you. But again, all that to come. Um, relays, uh, very quickly, this is just a way to um, to schedule in a live broadcast from another online radio source. So if you had a friend or a colleague who, uh, uh, who had a station and you wanted to broadcast some of their shows on your station, or maybe you had multiple stations, then this is a way of, instead of having to Uh, you know, take files from someone else's show or replicate shows across your multiple stations, you can simply broadcast a live playback, a relay of another radio station. So I'll show you how that looks when I get to the schedule. Talk shows is a fantastic tool if you subscribe to our plus or our premium plans. And it's a way to very easily create a recording uh, session with a re- remote guests or remote co-hosts uh, very easily. You know, you can uh, schedule it to uh, record, you can store it, and then you can broadcast it very, very simply. And the way this works, I create a, a room or a show. I've got one here called Phil Demo. It comes with an invitation link here, which I send to my guests. They click on that, and then they're taken to kind of like a green room, so they can see the name of the show. They can check their mic levels, or you know whether it's a speaker on the phone or something like that, whatever they're using. You, meanwhile, as the host, click Start Session. And I'll be able to see my guests waiting for me, and I can accept them into the call. I can select what microphone I'm using. We can chat to each other, wait for everyone to get there. You can have a maximum of three people on air with you. And then when you're ready, you click the record button and then you have 60 minutes to record. So this is like, yeah, booking out a studio again for 60 minutes. Uh, And it connects remote people from all over the world. All you need is a computer, a smartphone or a, a, you know, and uh, an Internet connection. And yeah, you can record a discussion, an interview, a podcast, and you've got 60 minutes to do it. When you finish a show, you save it and it will then be waiting in your completed talks folder here, which you can then simply move into a playlist, uh, which I'll show you how to do in a second. 
Uh, and then finally, we have news. So if you wanted to broadcast a top of our news bulletin at the well, at the top of every hour, uh, this is how you do it. You need to provide and find yourself a, um, a reputable news source that you want to use. You can use anything uh, as long as it's an MP3 stream. Now, we're using Sky News just for illustrative purposes. You can't actually use a service like theirs. Uh, but I, the reason I use it is because this provides the format that we need, an MP3 HTTPS stream. Uh, there are new sources that do provide that. Feature Story News is a good example of one that is compatible. Uh, so what you do is you take that uh, that stream and that stream will actually be overwritten every hour by the, the, the news provider. You build a package. So I've got an intro and an outro here. I select how frequently I want my news to play. So every hour across these hours, for example, Monday to Friday. And the software will automatically fade in a news broadcast to start and play at the top of hour of well all of those hours that you've selected. So it'd be a great way if you want to create a station that gives more people reason to stick around. Maybe it's a community station and you're delivering community news or you just want to keep people abreast of what's going on in the world or, or just in the country at least. Um, and yeah, a good way of trying to keep people listening to your station for longer is to provide services that they could get elsewhere, but they don't need to because they are listening to your station all day, such as news or weather reports or, you know, things like that. So it's a good feature to consider. So that's it for features. Um, I didn't want to go too heavily into what they all do. You can find more information and, in fact, tutorial videos about how they all work uh, on our website and our radio.co university. Um, so I'm going to move on to playlists. OK, so next we're going to talk about playlists. And this is how you will actually build your show. So step two of getting started, as I said. Um, so you can build as many playlists as you like. They can be as long or as short as you want. But it basically boils down to the principle of what do you want the software to play? Well, tell it what you want it to play. Um, so you can see I've got a, some pretty generic playlists, if I do say so myself, like Breakfast Show, Chris Show, Phil's Mix here. But I've also got a playlist called Default. Now, the default playlist is one that you will actually be given when you create your account. Yours will be empty. You can see mine has 90 tracks inside, but that's just because I've placed those 90 tracks inside. Yours will be empty. But the reason why I always strongly recommend you filling that playlist, first of all, with well, as much content as you could possibly want, is because this default playlist has two very important jobs. First of all, it's uh, going to be your auto DJ. So anytime there is a gap in your schedule, this default playlist just fills it in automatically with whatever you've placed inside of it. So, you know, you've got this 24-7 platform and the idea of building out your own 24-7 station does sound incredibly daunting. Don't worry, I'm, I'm aware of that. So this is why the default place comes into help, comes into rescue you, because it means you don't need to schedule content 24 hours a day. If you leave any gaps or you leave your schedule completely blank 24-7, this default playlist just keeps playing, looping if it needs to, and it will just play for as long as it needs to. So if I just jump ahead for a moment to the schedule, you will see, for example, on my uh, my schedule here, I have uh, a blank here between midnight and six every single day. And again, here from nine till six every single day. But there's nothing there, and that's because that gap is going to be automatically filled by that default playlist. And case in point is here. So you can see here the time of day, it's just gone 3 p.m. here. There is nothing scheduled here. My station is on air, but something is playing. Happy Mondays, in fact, are playing. And, um, well, that's because that track happens to be in my default playlist, and it's playing automatically. So this is just going to play, fill in the gap until it gets to 6 o'clock, where a show will begin. And likewise, it will take over from nine all the way till six the following morning. There are some people on our platform that basically don't schedule a single thing. They leave it blank 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And you can do that as well. Or you can do like me and just put bits and pieces there. Or there are people, again, who just schedule content every single hour of every single day. Whichever way you want to go down, you have the creative control and freedom to do just that. And the default playlist is a way to help you quickly, well, more quicker than you think, get a 24-7 station on the go. Um, so to build a show, come to the top here where it says new playlist, and I'm going to keep it nice and simple and generic. I'm just going to put Phil's Thursday Tracks. I'm going to spell it with an X, you know, to make it really cool. <laughs> uh, so here we go, Phil's Thursday Tracks. Uh, I'm going to give it a colour. I'm going to give it a blue, but a really cool blue. There we go. It's probably not the coolest blue, but hey, 
I think so. Uh, and I click on the add button and I've now got a playlist called Phil's Thursday Track with the next and the duration is zero because i've yet to add any tracks to it but that's absolutely fine because um well i just need to click on this plus button next to any track i want and it jumps across to my playlist and you can see every track i'm adding the duration is adding up so you know exactly how long this show is going to be which nicely is uh, exactly 39 minutes long so you know search for your tracks that you want there you know move down the list as you like just literally add in anything you like you drag tracks in as well and once tracks are on this right side they mean they are going to play in this specific order at this specific time so you can just move your tracks around if you want to change the order of them like so very simple stuff and that's kind of the uh the theme we've gone for with the platform of course it goes without saying it's a very professional and reliable platform but the thing we focus on and the thing i like to highlight the most is just how user friendly it is so even if you've got absolutely no knowledge or experience of radio broadcasting at all hopefully what i'm showing you right now just shows just how easy it actually can be case in point building a playlist just select what you want move it around and the software will do the rest. Um, all of these tracks will follow a crossfade that you can set in your settings. And that basically means how long does a track fade in and fade out into each other, which I think by default is about three seconds. So Bob Marley will fade out and Bob Marley will fade in again. And because he's a greedy boy, he will fade out and fade in again, you know, with a couple of seconds to go. That's the basics of building a playlist, just moving things across. You could click save and very happily schedule that show. There are other ways or other types of content other different ways of building a place that you can apply one of those being uh, random tracks or using the use of tags so if i click on the tags tab here you will see a list of all the tags i've made very similar to the tag list i showed you before so i can take these tags and i can place them into my playlist like so there we go, 80s, Northern Soul, and Chilled. And what the software will do is when it gets to one of these tags in the running order, it will play a random track that's associated with that tag. So I've got an 80s tag here. Say, for example, I had 100 tracks tagged as 80s. It's just going to play a random one. If I put the same tag in multiple times in a row, like so, then the software is going to know what tracks it's already played within that tag so it's always guaranteed to be random it will play every track within that tag once before any are played for a second time so yeah you can put the same tag in multiple times rely on it an awful lot and as long as you've got plenty of tracks and variety within that tag yeah it's always going to be random or it's going to be random for as long as it uh, can be uh, if you wanted to build an entirely random show uh you know so i could build a show that literally just contains tags like that you don't even need to put a single specific track here so as you can see here 80s northern soul chilled now if i scheduled that show for one hour then for one hour it will just play a random 80s a random northern soul a random chilled it will then go back to the top 80s northern soul chilled 80s northern soul chilled and so forth and it'll fill that for the entire time i've scheduled it for on the schedule uh, and yeah you can even just build one that contains one tag, it would just keep playing random back-to-back -back 80s tracks in this uh, in this case. So it's, it's incredibly easy to build a playlist. You really don't need to put that much time and effort into it if you don't need to or don't have the ability to. Now, if you wanted to play a, uh, a show that you'd recorded, you wanted to repeat it on air, you'll find it under the Recordings tab here. So you'll find uh, this one that I did last week. I'm going to move it across. And now I'm playing my old two-hour-long show within my two-hour-long playlist. Um, so, uh, yeah, you know, I can play as many of these as I like, and it will just play them back to back like so. So it's a great way if you just want to recycle shows, you don't necessarily want to make them available on demand. You just like to give people the opportunity to hear them again. This is how you do it. Talk shows. If you've used that specific talk show tool, if it's available in your plan, you will find your recording there and again, move it across. And then voice tracking. So if you've recorded any voice tracks within that voice track menu I showed you earlier, find the recording you like, which was Phil Intro Rambling, and play it in there. And you can obviously put as many of these as you like and scatter them throughout your show. Um, I mentioned another way that you can record them. There's actually a little handy microphone button here on the top right. If I click that, it takes me to that exact same voice tracking window you saw moments earlier uh, and I can do the same thing so I always find it easier maybe to or rather it makes more sense if I record voice tracks here because I can record a voice track and then immediately place it where I want it to go so that's how you build a playlist boils down to that fact a moment uh, I mentioned earlier what do you want it to play well just 
move it across to the right hand side click save and now it's time for step three scheduling your show if i click on schedule You've already seen it before. As I say, all of these gaps are going to be automatically filled by that default playlist. But if you would like a specific show to play at a specific time, click the time you want it to start and drag it to the time you want it to finish. So I have built a show called Phil's Thursday Tracks, so it makes sense to play it tomorrow on Thursday. So I'm going to press uh, 12 and I'm going to drag it down to 2. I'm going to do a show 12 till 2 in the afternoon, like so. Now let go, and this just asks you to confirm the details of your show or your event. So you can see here it starts at 12, it runs for two hours, and it therefore finishes at two. Perfect, that's exactly what I wanted. At the moment, I've also scheduled it just for Thursday because it's a Thursday show. But say, for example, this was, you know, a breakfast show or it was just a random show that I would like to play, you know, several days a week. Any day you select, the software will also schedule it on those days. So it's now going to schedule 12 till 2 on Thursday, Saturday, and if I extend it further, next Tuesday, because obviously Tuesday's already passed in this example. You can select every day, of course, here. Now, I said you could extend it because this only schedule shows for the week. If you want these shows to be on air further past this week, so maybe for the next few months, click repeat every week and actually select a random date within the next two years and it will schedule it every day every week up until that date i'm not going to go that berserk i'm just going to select the 8th of november why not so i'm just now giving it the ability to schedule shows and content for the next you know nine months or so now the last thing i do click on the advanced tab and this is where i confirm the event type simply what sort of show is this going to be now if i select playlist then as it suggests it means i want to play a playlist on air now i choose that playlist from here at the top any playlist i select on this drop down menu will be the playlist we're going to play so i've got phil's thursday tracks and there we go it's now going to play phil's thursday tracks playlist 12 till 2 every day of the week starting from thursday repeating every week up until november in this example and if I'm happy with all of that, I'll click Create, give it a second or two, and hey, presto, there we go. We've now got my playlisted show, Phil's Thursday Tracks, scheduled and ready to rock and roll. It's now going to start playing at 12, and it's going to fade out at 2. And if I move across several weeks in the future, you can see, as I was going to March and you know April, those shows have been scheduled as I had instructed it to. Now, because the software is all cloud-based, of course, as long as your station is turned on air, it will do exactly what it's told. So you don't need your computer on, you don't need power, you don't need internet. I've told the software that at 12 till 2, I want a specific playlist to play. You can turn your computer off, go to work, go to sleep, whatever you do, and the show will go on. It will fade in at 12, fade out to all on its own. Magic. Uh, so that's how you do a playlist and how simple it is to do it. Just upload your content, build a playlist, decide what time you want it to play. Now for a live show, it's done in pretty much the same way. All you do is where it says event type, you select live DJ. Similarly to a playlist, you need to select the specific host that's gonna do the show because the software will only give this chosen person the ability to go live. And you can invite people onto your account by uh, accepting them as a user. And once they've accepted the invitation to become a user, which I'll show you how to do uh, just after this, uh, you need to select them to be that chosen host. So it makes sense to schedule myself for a show. So I'm gonna click Phil. So this means the software is expecting me, Phil, to be logged in and to go live. Because if anyone else tries to log in and go live, they can't because the software has only been instructed to give this person, me, the ability to do a live show. If I'd like to record my show, again, as long as I'm uh, I'm subscribed to the standard plan, I can click record broadcast on and I can know that it's going to record. Uh, now, I'm editing this event right now because I did create it previously and you can edit events as much as you like. You can change the times, the sorts of shows they are, the lengths of them. Um, you can even change a DJ mid-show. You know, can, it, while a show is on air, you can change uh, as much as you like because you are the owner of the account. So your saying goes. Uh, so I'm going to update the event. I'm going to update all the events that I've created so far with this run of shows. So they will all now change to say 12 till 2, live DJ Phil, exactly what I wanted it. Um, so both I and the software know who should be going live. And as I said, if anyone else tries to log in and go live instead, they can't. There is a backup playlist here, which you'll see. Now this 
is the second job that the default playlist can do. I mentioned there was two, but I only went through one of them. Because the second job the default playlist can do is it acts as your first default backup playlist in the event of you having technical issues during a live broadcast. So whatever playlist you select here, when you have chosen a live DJ, will be your backup playlist. So that's the only time your personal uh, power and internet connection actually matters with our platform is you know, in the interest of doing a live broadcast. If I was doing something that was automated, doesn't matter what my power is because everything's being powered by us. If you had a power cut during a show or you were late starting a show and you didn't connect or you lost connection midway show, the software panics because it doesn't want there to be dead air on your station. So what it will do is it will fade in whichever playlist you've selected here, which in this case is backup playlist fills Thursday tracks. Or if you've yet to create a playlist, then it will be the default by default. Um, so it basically means even if there was any uh, you know unforeseen technical circumstances revolving around your live show, your audience won't be missing out. There'll be no dead air because something will be playing instead. And as soon as you reconnect, that will automatically fade out and you will fade in nice and easy. And you can see as well, recording has been enabled. And that's everything involved in programming a live show. You just need to tell the software, like a playlist, you just choose a specific person and tell the software what time they should be going live. And when you are doing a live broadcast, the software takes a step back. You've told it what you want to, uh, you know, when you want to go live. When you connect through Bort or our broadcasting tool, you confirm what you're using to go live. So once you've connected, yeah, the software goes, great, you do what you want. I'll see you again in two hours time. So yeah, whatever you've chosen to do, use for your live show you can use it to its full capacity and uh, yeah just go wild for your entire show and then the software will step back in when your show is about to finish um, speaking of hosts the way you get them on is at the bottom here you've got your users section and if you want to invite a, uh, a, a new dj to be a host you click invite a user you take their name so if it was me phil my email address, my role, we'll say DJ. There are different roles you can assign to people. And as they go down the list, the less access to the platform they have. So a station manager, they have the same abilities as you, the owner, you can, they can do everything you can. Music controller has the ability to uh, you know, upload media, build shows, go live if they want to, but they can't change any settings. And a DJ and a guest DJ only have the ability to log in remotely and go live. A DJ can see how many people are listening guest DJ can't. So if you want to keep any of your audience numbers a secret to not put any people off or just to stop them getting too egotistical, uh, then yeah, why not um, uh, give them guest DJ access? You click invite, they get an email, they follow those instructions and they'll then be a registered user on your account. They don't need to pay anything to sign up because they come under your umbrella. And as I said at the top of the demo, all of our subscription plans have a cap on how many people you can invite to your account. So uh, yeah, as long as you don't surpass that, keep inviting people to join your team. Uh, now, the final thing I wanted to, to share with you in, in regards to my four steps to getting started is probably the most important, so listen up. Uh, how do people actually listen? So if I click on the Listen tab here on the left, you will see, first of all, the simplest way people can listen, a simple streaming URL that will be available in MP3 or AAC, depending on which stream type you choose. Now, this is the simplest way people can listen. You can share it on social media or just send it to people. And as long as your station is on air and at least one track is playing or one show is playing, anyone who clicks on that, it just opens up a browser tab on your computer and it starts streaming your station nice and easy. It's not the most attractive way of people listening because you can see it's a streaming.radio.co in it. It's got loads of codes and numbers. It, it's not very personal, basically. Uh, now, this particular URL cannot be customized. We have to use it on our end. Um, but you can instead hide this by submitting it to a number of internet radio directories like Streamer or TuneIn, you may be aware of. It's probably one of the most well-known ones. It's also one of the most difficult to get on and the most expensive to get on. So be wary if you do look into it. Um, but we've got a list of around about 40 different directories you can submit your station to. So again, you can find that on our uh, help center, help.radio.co. And um, so you can use this link to create a profile on those directories and direct people to those locations to listen to your station instead. If you want to keep something that's more personal and you happen to have a website, you can ignore both of those and instead build yourself a web player. Now, this web player, 
can be tied to the metadata of what you're broadcasting. You know, the metadata being the track title, the artist, any artwork associated with this music here. So you can see we've got Beyonce's Crazy in Love playing here. And I can change how it looks in terms of what size it is, what color schemes are used. I can actually turn the artwork off and just have the branding for my station like here. So you have the ability to build your own player. It takes about 30 to 60 seconds from the add player button here on the top right. And the code to make this available on your website is automatically generated. All you do is click copy embed code and then paste that onto your website. And there we go. Your player is visible on your website. Nice and easy. You can expand on this, however. So we actually have a series of add-ons that you can uh, make available on your uh, station. So first of all, a website builder. If you wanted to have a website and you don't have one already, you can build one through us. It's an extra $12 a month or $120 for the year. Uh, we give you all the tools, templates, widgets, things like that to build your website. And we give you a domain name if you don't have one already. If you do, great, you can build a website for it uh, in very, very quickly. And all you do is you click Get Started and it adds it to your account. You can also have the ability to add some smart speaker functionality such as your very own personal Alexa skill and also your Google Home action. Uh, so if you, if, so regardless of whether ha people have Google Nest devices or Amazon Echo devices, you can make a command to play your station directly through those speakers. Um, now, these are perhaps the most important or, or uh, you know, uh, additional part of your station that you should consider uh, or, you know, maybe consider uh, subscribing to one of our higher end plans to make the most of it because numbers have shown, particularly over the last few years and, and this year, 2023, as, as, we've, as we are currently recording in, um, smart speakers are the most popular way people are listening to internet radio because they are the closest thing to an actual radio. You know, it's a, it's a speaker, a device uh, in the corner of your kitchen or front room that can just play content all day, every day. Uh, and for an extra $10 a month or $100 for the year, uh, it just adds so, so much accessibility, so much appeal to your station. Uh, you know, people can listen to your station without lifting a finger. They just say, Alexa, play Phil's radio. Alexa will introduce it and just immediately start streaming your station. And you won't find any of our branding on this. You won't hear any allusion to, to radio.curb or any other station. This is purely a stream uh, exclusively for your station. And for $10 a month, as I say, it can be such an, uh, uh, an efficient, beneficial way to help grow your station because of how cheap it is and uh, yeah, how widely accessible it makes your station uh, now become. Uh, there are other things you can add to your um, account as well. You can do a series of uh, uh, mobile apps. So if you subscribe to at least our um, uh, our plus and premium plans, I'm just coming to our website here, you come to apps. This is what your apps can look like. And you'll see that they follow a template there. So don't worry if you've never built a mobile app before. Neither have I, but I built one of these ones. Um, it just follows a step-by-step -step guide asking you what color scheme you want things to, to be, uh, what logos you want on there, um, what links to your Facebook or your website. It's just, you know, a couple of pages uh, of, you know, s simple questions. Uh, and then you send that to our development team and then we will then build the app, get it authorized, reviewed, and we'll get it released for you as quickly as possible. Uh, it's always worth checking in with our support team before you do submit an app to us just to make sure um, you know that everything's all correct because there are a lot of things Google and Apple uh, do require such as proof of licensing or your images have to be a very specific size. So any questions uh, or you know about how long the apps might take to develop as well, you can always get in touch with our team when you are ready to submit them. What's fantastic about these apps as well that vastly improves on the old apps we used to have is the ability to not only have your live radio station on available on your app, but also a podcast or at the very least an on-demand portal to your content. So if you are looking to incorporate both live broadcasting and on-demand content into your audio branding, this is such a fantastic way to very easily create your very own custom hub for your audio brand you know so you know if people don't want to listen to what's currently on live don't worry they've got a few old shows or talk shows they can listen to anytime they like 
Um, we'll also be incorporating updates into these, you know, maybe new features, new, uh, you know, new uh, links and connections to them as well. So again, if you want to know where, what direction our apps are going to, uh, then again, reach out to our support team and they can help answer any questions you have about your apps. But these are absolutely fantastic tools to consider taking. Uh, and as I say, in order to have these apps, they will be available in our plus and our premium plans currently. This is as of February 2023. Uh, if you do want those apps, you do need to sign up for these two plans here, as you can see. Hence, the, the price jump between them increases, of course, huge amounts of storage space, listeners, as I mentioned already, but the inclusion of the mobile apps and the Alexa skill. Also, the Google action is involved in the premium plan as well, uh, but you can add the Alexa skill and the Google actions onto a standard plan as well, if you wish to. Uh, last couple things really to show you, let me just go back to the platform, uh, is the, well, you've got people to listen, how many are actually listening. It's nothing, honestly, that you should be focused on, or, or rather, it's nothing you should be obsessed with. Being constantly obsessed with whether people are listening or not listening is not healthy for, for someone who is looking to launch their very own station, uh, mainly because, you know, this is something you want to spend a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of, you know, it, this is a passion of yours. It's not just a hobby or something you're looking to make a quick book. And if you are looking to make a quick book on your radio, then you are going to need to subscribe and broadcast for, you know, I'd say at least six months to really see where your station is going and what could be done better. Um, so yeah, big tip there is don't be obsessed about people listening. Even if one or a handful of people are listening, that's more people than were listening to your station previously. You know, it's people who have chosen to listen to. So grow your station patiently in your own speed and don't obsess over the numbers because they will come if you put a lot of time and effort into promoting your station in the right way. But the statistics, yet, last thing I'm going to show is just allowing you to see, you know, what, what your station's performance is like, such as how many listeners have you got over a period of uh, up to a maximum of 60 days? Uh, where in the world are they based? It's quite an eclectic audience here. Uh, what devices are they using? What web browsers are they using even? And so this can be really handy if you find that a lot of people are listening to your station from their Android web browser or their, or their you know, Safari or something like that from, from an iOS device. Then maybe that makes you think, hmm, I bet I would get more listeners or at least make those few listeners happier if I was to develop an app for them because that will replace their need to use uh, their simple web browser. I can make an app specifically for their devices. So all these all these stats here are really great at indicating which direction your station should be going in or you know it can grow in. Uh, you can also have real-time stats as well. So this will show you exactly who's listening right now, uh, where they're based, um, you know, how long they've been listening for, how much bandwidth they're using up. And if you're not happy with uh, someone listening, like this person's been listening for nearly 200 hours. Wow, wow. You must really love the few tracks that I play in rotation. This is, of course, is a fake connection just to give you an idea of how it looks. So, But if I did want to get rid of them, I can just kick someone off like so. Um, and that's kind of everything in a nutshell. There are lots of other things I'm not going to dwell on just yet. You know, there are settings that help improve the sound of your station. Like all of our station, uh, all, all of our subscription plans allow you to broadcast in uh, really crisp 192 kbps HD quality of sound. If that random series of numbers and letters means nothing to you, it just really means, you know, it's really crystal clear. It's really high quality. Uh, you can change uh, the quality of your stream. Security settings let you block certain countries from listening to your platform. Uh, you have integrations with the likes of our, you know, sister company podcast.co. Twitter can tweet out what you're currently playing. And your billing page is there to allow you to instantly upgrade or downgrade your plan anytime you like. So if you want to grow your station, start on the smaller plan, work your way up or maybe scale back. You know, we go out with a bang and scale back a little bit or you subscribe monthly and want to switch to a yearly plan. Again, you absolutely can. That's all done through the billing tab here. And that's it. That's the Radio.co crash course. I know there's a lot to digest over 40, 45 minutes or so, but that will really give you a good idea on the best way to use our platform. But most importantly, the best way to get started and begin broadcasting happily. And there we have it. Told you it was easy. That's how quick you can get your very own internet radio station on air. Now, of course, there are lots of other things involved. There are features I didn't quite highlight on, but they're the basics. Now, outside of that video, there are other things that you may want to consider and, you know, chat about and you know, research before jumping ahead into your own internet radio station, such as equipment. You know, I've got a microphone and a desk hooked up, but what's the right piece of kit for you? What do you need or feel like you don't necessarily need? 
Uh, there may be buzzwords you've heard about the industry that you want to question, such as what does licensing mean? Is monetization possible? How do I become a successful presenter? All things like that are, well, covered in a lot of webinars, videos, guides that we've spent countless hours putting together to really help you bring your own internet radio station to life. We're a software company first and foremost, but we're really just nerds for radio. So if there's anything that we can help, you know, make internet radio something successful, simple and enjoyable for you, then get in touch via studio at radio.co or visit our website and head to our blog where you'll find a lot of guides and videos about there. Uh, we've also got our radio.co university that you can find. And of course, you may even be watching this on our YouTube channel. So give us a like and a subscribe to be the first to find lots of new videos that again, we spent a lot of time and passion putting together. Now, the things that you've seen in that video should get you up to speed with running your own internet radio station. So why not activate a free trial today and give it a go yourself? Or you can even book a call with me and members of the team and we can discuss your plans, any questions you have, and again, get you up to speed in no time at all. So until next time, take care and happy broadcasting.